All right, Dream Think Doer, this is going to be fun uh, operating a little bit without a net. We're just going to have some fun here. I've got some notes of what I want to share, kind of some of the bigger picture stuff, but we'll see what gets filled in as we talk, right? It just feels like we're having a coffee, um, getting a chat, and uh, like I said in the intro, this is about what we're now calling the hero's journey, or hero's journey, um, and it will be a story about dreaming, and uh, we'll share some some different observations about uh walking out dreams and hashtag real talk. I'll be straight up with you. All right. <laughs> uh, this one's also going to involve a little bit about prayer because that's who I am. That's uh, kind of my jam. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be your thing, but as dream think doers, you know that, uh, you know, we talk about it all. So we're going after that. And I know we're going to touch on a little bit of perfectionism, perfectionism. <laughs> I didn't even say that right. Right. <laughs> I, I can I can sense a theme. I can feel where we're going here. Okay, so um, it's going to be fun. All right, so here's the dealio. Um, as I shared in the intro, we have a new puppy, and his name is Hiro. Um, H-I-R-O. More about that here in just a little bit. But uh, this is an interesting story because it's a dream that's been in the making for about 30 years, which is kind of crazy, right? Um, the short version of the start of the story is that, uh, and I don't know that I ever shared this, but back when my wife and I were thinking about what to do after college, uh, she was getting her master's, and I was thinking about going to law school, which I don't know that I ever shared that on Dream Think Do before. But I was considering it, and uh, we were visiting law schools, and uh, as a part of that, I went to Boston University to visit. We went to Boston to check it out, and um, uh, interestingly enough, I love Boston. It's a great city, um, and Boston University was kind of at the top of my list. If I was going to law school, it was, it was one of those that I was really interested in, so we went Met with the, uh, you know, folks from the school, toured the school, checked out the city, all of that. Uh, while we were there, interestingly enough, we were walking around downtown Boston, and I'll never forget it. I saw this majestic dog. Never seen a dog like this thing before, but it was it was amazing. It was beautiful. It was m massive, I think would be a good word, probably 100 plus pounds, uh, but just gorgeous. And... Uh, wound up talking with the owner for a little bit, really connecting, found out that this was an Akita. Now, interestingly enough, uh, you know, started to like dive into this breed a little bit at that time and uh, realized it's, it, it is a good size breed. I mean, they, the adults get to hundred pounds plus uh, they're very, they're a very loyal breed. Um, they're uh, very connected with their family, uh, that kind of thing. They can be bred to be very protective of their family, be trained to do that, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but also this, this particular dog that we met in Boston was, uh, massive, but incredibly gentle, gentle and kind. And, and I was just like, Oh my gosh, it just really connected with this dog. Now, uh, what's funny or ironic or whatever is that uh, very quickly realized that uh, the, the law school thing was a, a dream for a season, but it in some ways just gave me awareness uh, that I wanted to help people, that I wanted to you know support them and encourage them in their dreams and their goals and their life. But law school and being a lawyer wasn't probably the best way to do that. So, you know, one of those dreams was to just kind of bring me awareness of, okay, there's certain things I need to look for, certain passions, certain values that I have. And and being a lawyer is one way to walk those things out, but very quickly kind of figured out that, that probably there was going to be a better way. So I leaned into that. And uh, within about six months after that, my wife and I pursued another dream, which was to move to Montana, and that was incredible, all of that. But even though the, the law school dream kind of went away, that Akita dream, I mean, it just one of those things where it just planted a seed of, I want a dog like that. Now, at the same time, I realized, especially doing some research, that this dog, based on its size, based on its connection to its owner, uh, you know, just a number of things, you know, a dog... 
of, of that girth, uh, takes some additional effort, takes some additional time. And, and even though we've been a dog family, um, we have owned dogs for 30 years. It just was never the right time. And so even though that, that dream of an Akita owning an Akita was planted about 30 years ago, it just wasn't right to walk out. And, and I think that's probably my first point, kind of the, a teachable point or a realization about going after dreams and, and especially, you know, walking alongside people as a coach for years, doing these big dream gatherings, um, over the years have realized that, and we've talked about this a little bit in big dream or in dream think do episodes in the past that, you know, just because a dream isn't right for this season doesn't mean that it's a bad dream. It's just not right for the season. Right. And, and what's wild is, is that, uh, you know, fast forward to, this past year and a half or so. I mean, 2020 was one of the weirdest, wildest, hardest years for most people. And, and I would definitely say that, you know, that was us. We had to change our business model. We had to do a number of things differently, those kinds of things. But yeah, I think also like any challenge, if you look at it, sometimes it can also help you to uncover new opportunities. And, and because of the changes of COVID, because of, you know, all of the, you know, this is a new world, um, our business model really changed where I'm able to do more. I'm delivering more right from my office. And so, uh, I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but all, all of a sudden a door was starting to open. So the wildness and the challenge of 2020 started to crack open a door and I didn't even realize it at the time. So uh, that kind of brings us up to, uh, you know, basically February, January and February of 2021. And uh, basically in late 2020, just to, you know, bring 2020, you know, yet one more challenge, our Australian Shepherd. And like I mentioned, we've had dogs for years. We've had Huskies, we've had Labradors, uh, and our most recent dog uh, had been an Australian Shepherd named Lily. Now, Lily is an absolutely beautiful dog, wicked smart. I've talked about her on previous episodes. Uh, one of the most brilliant, probably the most brilliant dog we've owned up to that point for sure. And um, if you've ever had an Australian Shepherd, you know what I'm talking about. This breed is wicked smart. And Lily um, lived up to that. I mean, she looked at me like, man, if I just had thumbs, I would run this house. I would drive that truck. <laughs> you know, she was just an absolute amazing dog. And we had her for 12 years. And sadly, towards the end of 2020, we started to realize she was having um, all sorts of health issues. And, and we were able to, to basically discover that she has or she had uh, a form of cancer. And, and that was heart wrenching, um, especially at the end of, of a tough year for so many people. But that was, that one was particularly tough. And, um, sadly on February 1st, uh, Lily passed away and, uh, that was difficult. If, if any of you have ever had a, a great dog, uh, or a dog period, but especially a great dog that you've had for a number of years, you know, how difficult, a passing can be. Um, and that happened on February 1st of 2021, Lily passed away. And, um, that was just particularly tough. And I'll, I'll be honest. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, my dream of having an Akita has, has popped up on my radar from time to time. But again, based on the work that it takes to have a dog that size, the, the, you know, the loyalty that they have for their owner, means I can't be on the road all the time, which is definitely what, you know, our life had been before, you know, all of those things. Plus, you know, the ups and downs of, of Lily, especially in her last few months kind of made me think we're never going to have another dog. We don't need to have another dog. Um, you know, we're good. We've had great dogs up to this point. We don't need to have another dog. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and I think my wife and my family were kind of on the same page that, you know, everybody was, uh, kind of think of the same thing. Now, by the way, if you hear crunching in the background, I don't, I don't know if my mic will be able to pick this up, but Hero is under my office chair right now, crunching on a bone. So if you <laughs> hear him, he, he obviously wanted to join 
in the podcast. He's been in my office this morning hanging out, uh, but he wanted to sit underneath my desk now and and hang out. So if you hear the crunching, he just wanted to jump into the mic. So, um, all right. So here we are, February 1st, okay? And, uh, you know, the passing of Lily, um, all of those things, very rough couple of weeks. And fast forward to Valentine's Day, February 14th. And my wife, Melissa, and I went out for a date. And, uh, you know, it's been a couple of weeks since Lily's passing. It's romantic. It's it's Valentine's Day, for crying out loud. And, you know, we're having dinner together at a nice restaurant, relaxing, um, you know, just talking about life. And we kind of use Valentine's Day to be a time to have some fun. But we also talk about our goals, about, you know, our dreams together and the things that we're wanting to do and, and that kind of thing. And as we're doing that, Melissa... Um, brought up that she and Alex, our younger son, had been talking. And uh, Alex had shared with her, he's like, you know, we live in a big house and it just seems too big to not have a dog in it. And he shared that with my wife. And, and you know, my wife, who Lily was basically her dog. Um, Lily was just incredibly... Uh, smart and kind and loyal, but if we're weighing things out, Lily was my my wife's dog. Um, uh, th- there's a great story just to help illustrate this point is that when we went to go pick up Lily, we had looked on the internet, we had worked with this breeder to uh, make all this stuff happen, and, and Mella kind of picked out Lily over the pictures of the internet. But when we showed up, uh, this woman lived on this beautiful farm, and um, all the puppies were out in the dooryard, kind of the open area. And it was like straight out of a Hallmark movie. I'm not kidding you. But when we showed up uh, to, to, you know, pick a puppy and, and Mel had really kind of honed in on Lily. She had very distinct coloring, all these kinds of things. Um, Lily, as a puppy, you know, not knowing us from Adam, uh, saw us, stopped, and then literally bolted, just ran across the dooryard, this this open area, and jumped into Melissa's arms. I mean, it was straight out of a Hollywood movie. Steven Spielberg couldn't have choreographed this scene any better than it played out. So Lily was Melissa's dog, there's no doubt, through and through. Um, and so, you know, for Mel, obviously, the loss of Lily was particularly tough. So for her to bring this up, you know, on Valentine's Day, when we're talking about goals and dreams and, you know, things that are coming. I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Cause I knew that, you know, in, in some ways we'd talked, especially at the height of the loss that I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm good if we don't ever have a dog again. Uh, you know, Lily was such a great dog and, and Mel was kind of in agreement. Um, but she and Alex obviously have been talking. And so, uh, as we were sitting there talking, she's like, you know, I, I think maybe we should think about having another dog. And I got to tell you like that, that dream, I don't know if you've ever had one of those dreams that's laid dormant or, or maybe, you know, you've, you've buried or maybe it's gotten a little dusty, but that dream of having an Akita kind of popped up just like it, it kind of like burst in my chest. Like it kind of broke out, you know? And I said, well, you know, what do you think? Um, this, this could be a time where we get an Akita. Now, Mel knew this dream of mine, and she also knew that with an Akita, um, you know, it's going to take more work. It's it's uh, going to be one of those things where my lifestyle, our lifestyle probably in the past wouldn't work so much. You know, as a speaker, I was traveling 50% of the time uh, to have a big dog that was, you know, primarily mine and mine to train and being gone 50% of the time just wouldn't work. But because of COVID, because our business model has changed significantly, I'm home a lot and really enjoy that. Um, and it's funny because we were sitting there and and you could tell as she brought it up, you could tell that she knew exactly where my heart would go because she knows she knows me, she knows my dreams. Um, and she's like, Oh yeah, I was I was kind of thinking that too, that maybe, maybe this is the time for an Akita. And so uh you know, I kind of let it sit, you know, sometimes there are dreams that, you know, smaller dreams, you can just take action on immediately. But sometimes those bigger dreams, you need to, you know, stoke the fire a little bit, but then let it sit, see if the fire really ignites, right? Because a part of this too is, is that 
you know, an Akita is a big dog. It's also a dog that can live for years, you know. Uh, Lily had lived for 12 years. Of course, any dog that we have, we want to have a long relationship with. So it's like that's not it's not a light thing, you know. That's that's a pretty hefty thing. So I just let it sit. Now, um, I hadn't done a lot of praying because it wasn't even on my radar, but that's that's when I started to shift into prayer around it because that's that's where I go. If, I, if I'm thinking about a dream, um, if I'm thinking about strategies to walk out that dream, if I'm weighing out whether we should take action on a dream, I go to prayer. Um, that's just my thing. And again, it doesn't have to be your thing, but it's definitely my thing because uh, I've just learned that over the years that, uh, you know, um, I believe that God loves us, adores us, um, put us here for a reason, knows the longing of our longing of our heart, and wants to talk talk to us about all of those things. And sometimes the longing of our heart is exactly what we what we need and what we should have and and what we should pursue in that season. And sometimes it's not. So I always, you know, talk with God and, and just lay into it. And sometimes I hear really clear things, and sometimes not so much, but. Interestingly enough, when it comes to this journey, uh, there's a little backstory in regards to prayer with this story too. And um, when I started to lean into prayer, God reminded me of that. So I want to share a little bit of that with you too, just because it it just kind of helps to show in some ways or illustrate how this dream journey at least works for me. It doesn't necessarily have to work for you this way, but it it works this way for me. so the backstory, when I started to pray about this Akita, God reminded me of an experience that I'd had a couple of years prior. Now, what's interesting about that is, is that a few years ago now, uh, we took our younger son to L.A. He's going to acting school out there. And uh, it was the first time that we as the Matthews, we have two boys, and it was the first time where we were taking a son and and leaving them somewhere for an extended period of time, right? Uh, you know, our boys had gone to camp. Our older son had gone to a, a college, but it was it was close by, and so he actually lived at home. Um, all of those things. So, taking our son to L.A. and preparing to drop him off, preparing to leave him there, uh, was a culmination of a dream journey. Like he had been looking forward to this for years. It was something we had had looked forward to, prepared for, all of those things. But at the same time, you know, uh, you know, if if you're a parent, you know what it's like. Uh, maybe that that you know to to launch a kid into their dream sometimes means time away, right? It means risk. It means separation. All those things. And so we went out to L.A. You know, to get him ready for this. Uh, you know, we were getting ready for him to you know, start school. So what we did was, um, we went and rented an Airbnb for about, I think it was eight or nine days that was close to the school. Um, so we could kind of turn it into a vacation, but also kind of get him used to the area, get him accustomed to the area. So like we went and shopped at the grocery store he was going to shop at. We, uh, went and checked out all the kind of restaurants that were in the area. We just got to know the area and explored California and things like that. But I'll never forget on Sunday morning, um, we got up, I got up early cause I'm kind of weird that way. And, uh, my heart was hurting because we were just a couple of days away from leaving him in LA. And, uh, I, yeah, my heart was, was wrestling. And, and I took that to God. I was just like, God, you know, here, here's this thing, right. That, that we've been getting ready for. It's something we want for our son. But at the same time, my heart's breaking at the thought of leaving a kid in L.A. Like, this is a hard town, and, and the Matthews were good together, and all those things. And, and I'll never forget, God was like, I know the longings of your heart. I have Alex taken care of. And just know that I know your needs. I know your wants. Just keep talking to me about that. And... It is one of those things where, you know, maybe you've had a prayer experience like that where it didn't bring immediate resolution, right? Like, um, but at the same time, it brought peace. And I think, you know, there's scripture that talks about that, you know, pray without ceasing and 
and and rejoice. There's even a verse in Philippians 4. We've talked about this. Philippians is a book in the New Testament in the Bible, and it's one of my favorite books. Uh, it's a very hope-filled chapter or, or book in the Bible. And and there's a particular verse that talks about, you know, rejoice, um, find joy, right? Pray always, right? Give things up to me. That's what God's saying to us is, is you know, give things up to me. And then look for excellence. Look for um, you, you know, beauty. Look for those things that, that you know, basically where you can see God moving. And so there was an immediate resolution. I can tell you that there was like, you know, it was like, oh nope, I'm still here in L.A. We are still leaving our son here in a couple of days. All of that. But at the same time, I felt this peace. And what's wild is, is that, um, and and you know, coming back to the Akitas and, and the Akita story is that uh, a little bit later that day, we decided to walk to a movie theater. There's a really cool movie theater within this area. And we decided to walk there as a family. And while we're walking there, um, we saw this guy and uh, he was walking two big dogs. And as we got closer, I'm like, oh my gosh, I told Mel, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is walking two Akitas. Now, Akitas, we didn't really talk about this, but Akitas, it's it's a relatively rare breed anywhere. Um, uh, but but it's it's a relatively rare breed, especially to have big dogs in L.A. You see a lot of people with smaller dogs in L.A., but you don't see a lot of people with big dogs. So the very fact that this was just hours after my prayer was just like, okay, that's something. Uh, but then we wound up interacting. Like, here we are walking down the sidewalk, um, you know, we could have crossed the street, but I'm like, are you kidding me? This is two Akitas. And so we talk with this gentleman. His name was Daniel. And uh, we just immediately connected with Daniel. We just started talking with him about the dogs. And and what we did, one of the dogs actually got up and and put his paws on my chest. And I mean, this is a massive dog. He's probably about 120 pounds. And, and like almost kind of like gave me a hug. I mean, for lack of a better word, it was like a hug. And Daniel, the owner, was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. He doesn't normally do this. And I'm like, no, I got to tell you, <laughs> I needed that, right? Like, that was something that was like, I don't know. I mean, it just felt like it was a kiss from God, right, to say, I got you. And, and talk about knowing the longing of my heart. Like, this Akita thing had been something that had been on my heart for, you know, 30 years. And here we are, boom, talking. And what's what's even wilder is, is as I talked with Daniel um, you know, the owner of these Akitas, uh, we started to talk about his life. We started to talk about some of his dreams, his goals. I'm weird. Those things just happen, right? I, I get curious and we start talking about things. And as it, as it was, he was getting ready to take a vacation, to take a, a trip, a month long trip where he was going to, to go on a hike, um, kind of a, a true journey. And interestingly enough, somebody that I had just interviewed on the podcast had done something similar. So all of a sudden I had, you know, this knowledge, this awareness of, of this particular journey that he was about to embark on. And we were able to have this just amazing discussion. It was like we were friends, like longtime friends, and we just met on the sidewalk in LA. And so we exchanged numbers just because I was going to share that podcast episode with him and, and, you know, share a couple of the other notes that I'd taken about you know, this journey and some of the research that I'd done and all those things. And so we just connected and it was great. And he and I texted back and forth a few times, um, you know, over the following year and a half, just to check in, see how he was doing, that kind of thing. Um, so wild, right? So what's interesting is, is that let's, let's come back, right? It's, it's now after Valentine's Day. It's uh, Melissa and I had talked about the possibility of getting an Akita, um, but I'm like, you know what? It's a rare breed. I, I, I'm not even sure how to start. So, you know, it, one of the ways you start anything nowadays is do what? You go to Google, right? <laughs> so I went to Google and I started to Google Akita breeders and, and, you know, Akita breeders in the Midwest, Akita breeders, you know, all this stuff. And it, it just didn't really connect. Sometimes you just have that gut feeling, right? Whether, I mean, it made logical sense. I mean, that made sense because I could go and I could, you know, look at reviews. I could price shop, right? I could, I could do all sorts of things. Um, but that just didn't, didn't feel right. And so I prayed. I said, Lord, if you want this Akita thing to work out, 
if this is the right season, make it an adventure, make it a story, like let it be something you and I talk about. And, um, instantly, instantly I knew what to do. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I didn't, I, I didn't, I like, you know, somebody didn't kick the door down with an Akita puppy, right? It wasn't, it wasn't obvious. It wasn't instant. But about an hour later, I get a nudge to text Daniel, right? This guy that I had met in LA with the two Akitas, all of those things about two years prior. I get a nudge to text him and I'm like, what am I supposed to ask him about the Akita puppies? And he's like, I just get this nudge. Just check in with him. Let him know that I put him on your heart and that you're praying for him. And just pray for him. And so he did. Text him, said, Daniel, I hope you're doing great, man. God put me on your heart or put you on my heart this morning. Just want to let you know I'm praying for you. I hope you're doing great. And, um, and I did. And then I just prayed for him a little bit and that kind of thing, which is cool, right? Like, and it's, it's one of those relatively low risk. And I didn't quite even know what that meant. Maybe it was just that whole thing of, Hey, this is a guy who has an Akita. Maybe I should ask him down the road. Maybe I should ask him about Akitas or how he got his Akitas, those kinds of things. Right. So interestingly enough, about two hours later, this is a Sunday morning, about two hours later, uh, uh, Alex, our son, our younger son and I are at church and I get a text. Now I think it's like 10 in the morning, our time, eight in the morning, LA time. Daniel reaches out. Oh my gosh, Mitch. So great to hear from you. Uh, you know, thanks so much for the prayers and oh my gosh, we just had puppies. Do you want one? (laughs) No, I had no idea, right? No idea. And, and that really wasn't even on my radar necessarily that, that Daniel would actually have puppies or whatever, right? Just crazy. And, um, and it gets better because he and I start going back and forth. I wait until after church. I'm not going to text during church. I was tempted to. <laughs> but right afterwards, you know, I, 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 I do take out my phone. I'm looking at it. I show Alex. He's like, hmm, that's interesting, right? And uh, afterwards, we start going back and forth. And then eventually we get into a phone call and sure enough, they had just had puppies. And what's fun, extra fun about this story is, is that the father of these puppies is bandit, the bandit, the, the Akita who actually got up on my chest and gave me a hug about two years prior. Now, how all that works or how that all plays out, I don't know, but I, I at least find it interesting, right? Like that's just wild. And I, I'm reminded almost instantly of my prayer of making an adventure, make it a journey, make it something that we talk with you about, God. And he's like, hey, you know, we we did just have puppies. And, um, uh, you know, they, they're too young to take now, but we could cer- certainly work something out. Now, that's amazing, right? That's incredible timing. It's a fun story, especially because, you know, here the the dad of these puppies is the 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 Akita who gave me a hug very much when I needed it, uh, you know, kind of an answer to prayers of God was with me and knew the desires of my heart, all those kinds of things. But now we've got a little bit of a challenge because I am in Iowa, right? In the great Midwest. Uh, the puppy that we are potentially talking about is in LA. Um, and that's not easy, right? That's, that's uh, kind of challenging. It's not like just driving down the street and picking up a puppy. Um, but it's one of those things where I just continue to lean into it and continue to talk talk with Melissa and Alex about it. Now, our older son, Ben, I think I've mentioned this is, has been in basic training. He joined the national guard. So he's in army basic training and now, um, into his additional training. So he's been involved with this decision-making, but peripherally over sporadic phone calls that he gets to make once in a while from basic training. But Alex and, and Melissa and I started to talk about the possibilities. I mean, it didn't make logical sense. I mean, to travel right now is a little bit of a challenge. Traveling with a puppy, um, even more so. Traveling with a big puppy, because that's Akita's get big pretty fast. All of those things, even more challenging. But we just decided to stay open to it. And I just stay, you know, stayed open to prayer, uh, talking with God about it, and stayed open to talking with Melissa and Alex about it. 
but one of the things, you know, we just started to just kind of, uh, in, in some ways a plan started to unveil itself. We started to realize like, you know what, Alex is going to be moving back out to LA, going to be starting school again. And we need to go and look at apartments. Uh, we could do that. Uh, Melissa and I were talking that, Hey, getting a little sunshine, maybe a little sand in our toes. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Maybe, maybe we could do that. But we then started to uncover a little bit of a challenge. Like all of a sudden it started to line up a little bit. It maybe started to make a little bit of sense. Not a lot of sense, but a little bit of sense. <laughs> right. Um, but then we started to realize like, Hey, if we get a dog, it's pretty good size. Um, he's going to be too big to carry into the cabin of an airline. Right. But probably too small to put in the cargo. I don't know about you, but I don't want to traumatize a puppy, especially a, a puppy of a breed that is known for its loyalty and connection to its owner. I didn't want to necessarily stick them in the cargo, uh, you know, the, the luggage hold um, and all of those things. I thought that might be too traumatizing. So we started to talk about, well, what, what would it be like to fly out there and drive back? Is that possible? It's not logical, but it could be kind of an adventure. Right, 1,700 miles, 26 hours of driving. But as we started to think through it, we started to think, you know, our son's going to live in L.A. as an actor. We know that to be the fact. And and we started to think, you know, at some point we're going to need to drive out there anyway. We've never done it. We've always kind of thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun. And so although it looked a little daunting to drive 26 hours in a car with a puppy, right, we started to think, what, what, what if we looked at it as an adventure? What if we looked at it as an opportunity? And so that's what we chose to do. We chose to fly out, look for apartments, pick up a puppy, and drive 1,700 miles home. <laughs> and it was. it was. It was a true adventure. And it wasn't easy, I can tell you. It was, it was one of those things that we saw some absolute beautiful, beautiful country. Um, but because of uh, a lot of things going on, my wife runs a number of ministries at our church. I had a big speaking engagement with Microsoft, um, all of those things. We couldn't take five days to do this trip. We couldn't even take four days to do the drive, I should say. We took we took a number of days to kind of be in California, see some friends, things like that. But the drive back, we basically had to do in about two and a half days, um, which is not ideal. I just want to tell you, if you want to do that drive, I recommend it. It's absolutely beautiful. The route that we took was through Vegas and then Utah and then uh, Colorado and then back through the Midwest. So it was absolutely beautiful. But to do it <laughs> in that amount of time was was challenging, to say the least. But it was an adventure. And it's one of those where I, I thought about it and reflecting back, it's it's kind of one of those where isn't any dream pursuit all about your perspective? Like, how are you going to look at it? Are you going to look at those challenges as burdens? Are you going to look at those challenges as um, uh, things to worry about, things to be anxious about? Are you going to look at those those challenges as as adventures? Now, I can tell you, I did all of that, right? I, I looked at them as burdens. I, I worried about them. Uh, but when I was at my best, Right when I was really intentional with my thoughts, as often as I could, I looked at them as adventure, and and in those areas where I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work out, instead of worrying about them, in my best thinking, right on my best days, I started to lean into the mystery, right, like the unveiling of the mystery. Now I wasn't perfect at it, but when I did that. It was amazing how more, how much more often I experienced joy, I experienced peace. I like fully enjoyed the process. Um, and, and I think Mel and Alex were doing the exact same thing. Like, uh, you know, as you can imagine, uh, 1,700 miles in a car with three people and a puppy, right? Plenty of opportunities to get frustrated with each other, especially <laughs> I am a planner. I'll just tell you, I, I usually, you know, plan a lot of things, right? And and I love my checklists. I love my spreadsheets. I love my budgets, all that kind of thing. But on our drive home, we kind of threw caution to the wind. Everything before that was completely wired in, dialed in, all of those things. But the drive home, we just kind of held loosely because it's like, hey, we're not quite sure 
how far we're going to get each day. We're not quite sure which, you know, area we want to stay in each night. So, you know, we'll just kind of, we'll just take it as it comes. And our first night was going to be in Vegas, right? I've been to Vegas a number of times. There's never a problem getting a hotel room in Vegas. Um, but as we started to get closer to Vegas, I whipped out, you know, my different travel apps. And all of a sudden we started to realize there is, there are no hotel rooms in Vegas. Now, what I didn't realize is that Vegas had opened back up, you know, that's fine. And we're not going to go into the, the, the debate of the safety of that or not. But as they did, they basically said, hey, you can open back up, but you can only open back up at about 50% capacity. Not good, right? And this was going to be on a Friday night, which is also not good because that's where everybody from LA goes, uh, you know, on the weekends for crying out loud. Literally, our drive to Vegas was almost like an LA traffic jam the whole time. So I think, I think that we got the last room in Vegas. Um, and when we got to the room in Vegas, pretty nice room. But when we got to the room, we realized that uh, our windows were facing a street party that went on till 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I, I, I called down to the desk like, hey, do you know anything about the street party? Like how long it'll go? And she's like, um, sir, it's Vegas. <laughs> that was her response. Right. And I'm just like, I'm exhausted already. You know, we got a puppy. It's like, we're on the 10th floor. I got to take this puppy down, downtown or downstairs to use the bathroom, you know, all this wildness. Right. So not ideal. Um, but it was funny because, uh, again, in our best moments, we were able to laugh about it, encourage each other, lean into the adventure of it, right? Let it unveil, uh, lean into the mystery, let lean into the unknowns. Um, and it wound up, you know, being messy and in some cases being hard, but in some ways also one of my favorite experiences so far. And, and so it's just absolutely Incredible, which, you know, again, reminded me, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to share this and do this a little bit differently is, you know, as I was just taking some notes about this journey so far is, isn't that often how it goes? Like even, even, you know, when we lean into a dream, when we start to pursue a dream and whether it's your thing to pray about that dream or not, um, you know, even like in my case, it's like, I, I felt like it was time to pursue this dream. Melissa and I were on the same page. So we decided on that together. Uh, which I'm wildly grateful for my bride and her outlook on life and all of that and her support of my dreams as well, you know, all of those things. But, you know, then I felt like we got the go ahead from God, you know, he kind of invited us into this journey, all of that. But even with all those things lining up and, and then having a puppy, right? Like right when we're open to it, right? When it seems right, boom, a puppy that we're actually connected to is, is there. Um, so, you know, a lot of things were lining up, but at the same time, isn't that just like a dream journey? Because it was messy, even though all those things lined up, right? It was messy. It's been hard sometimes. Um, it's been a stretch, but it's also those kinds of things that make it rich, make it life, you know, right? Like that, that, those things that, that sometimes all we long for, we think is security, safety, normal, Right. Um, but when I look back, it's like, you know what, but life, if we're, if we're really leaning into it is sometimes like the best times are, are some of the messiest, some of the hardest, right? Some, of, but those also tend to be some of the richest. So it's funny cause I, I, I bring this up, you know, to talk with you about it, but it's also to remind myself, right? Like that's one of the reasons why I do this podcast is sometimes I just need to be reminded of these things myself that when we look back, it's, it's usually not necessarily those times where things are normal or safe or predictable that, that we go, ah, those were the best days, right? Those were the richest experiences. It's usually where we're being stretched, where it's a little hard, whether it's where, you know, when it's a little messy, you know, all of those things. So, um, I guess I just wanted to, you know, speak to that a little bit. Um, and I will say that having our puppy who we've named hero now hero um, it is spelled H I R O. Um, and, and that is, uh, the Akita breed is a Japanese breed and, uh, originated in Japan. Um, interestingly enough, this, this breed was really kind of developed to protect Royal families, which I think is kind of fun, 
right? Um, and and so um, we decided to go with Hiro, which is the the Japanese spelling of that of that name. And um, as I've done some research, I've realized that 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 word, Hiro, Hiro, um, is uh, it, it's a word for gratitude. It's a word for abundance, which I love. Right. And, and he's been the representation of that. Now I can tell you he's a puppy speaking of messes and, um, he's not perfect. He's amazing. He is fun. He is hilarious. His paws are already bigger than he can handle. So sometimes he'll be on an out, out and out sprint and his paws will just not, <laughs> go where he thinks they should go and boom, he'll just roll somersault and, uh, you know, face plant and then be back up running again. Right. It's, it's those things. Um, and he's messy, right? We're working on potty training right now and he's doing really, really great with it. About 95% of the time we're hitting it out of the park. He's waiting till we get outside, but just because he wanted to be a part of this show and just because he thought I needed Yet another illustration. I'm only kidding, but uh, <laughs> he peed on my office floor while while I've been talking with you, <laughs> just a little bit. He looked at me, kind of like, "Check it out. Look what I'm doing, Dad." Right? And then he came over, and right now he's under my feet sleeping. So it's messy. It's not perfect. We're working on it. And so I guess that's that's one of the last things that I wanted to speak to, um, is that. I've realized um, I'm learning a number of things. And when God said, yes, uh, right, go do it, and and all of those things, he knew the desires of my heart. Um, I believe that he helped to line things up to make things happen. Um, and he knows the desires of my heart, but he also knows what I need, right? And and um, what's been interesting about this is I've I've needed a huge reminder about a few things. And, and one of the things that I've needed a huge reminder of is, is to take a little extra time, like having a puppy, a puppy that needs walks and needs to go outside and things like that has been a huge reminder for me that I need to take a little bit more time to breathe. I need to take a little bit more time to just be outside. Right. Um, and so, so that's been good. Um, but I think some, in some ways, the bigger lesson is about enjoying, enjoying the journey and letting go of perfection. And, and I think that's probably, you know, the, my last point that I'll try to make as a part of this hero's journey so far is that um, I, I've realized something. And that is that, and, and we've talked about perfection in the past on Dream Think Do and perfectionism and all of that, how it's, uh, it, 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 it's a joy stealer, right? It's a progress killer because you know we're if we're looking for perfection oftentimes we're not going to start if we're looking for perfection we're going to beat ourselves up um you know if we start to focus on progress that's the better thing progress not perfection right but one of the things that this has also helped me to realize is that i've had a bit of a pattern and and this is definitely something i've done in the past but i i think in this season i've had a heightened awareness of it and it's something that a good friend of mine and and uh, a past Dream Think Do guest, uh, William Paul Young, talks about. Um, Paul wrote The Shack, and he's just an awesome guy. Uh, but he always talks about future tripping. Watch out for future tripping. And future tripping is where you spend time in the future. And oftentimes when you're future tripping, you are worried, right? He talks about it from the context that oftentimes when we're future tripping, we're worried and it's because we're in the future and we are also thinking we are alone, right? There, there's no one to help us. The God's not there, um, that we're solo, that we're isolated and all those things. Future tripping can be very dangerous. And maybe you've experienced some of this as well. When you future trip, you, you start to imagine things going really badly, things going down in flames and all of that. And, and Paul said, just be beware of future tripping, right? And And one of the things that I've realized is, that I've been future tripping a little bit with Hero. And, and that is, I mean, he's a big dog, right? It's one of those things that these dogs are known for their loyalty, for their kindness, if they're raised right. Um, uh, their their um, connection to their owner, if they're raised right. But a big dog like this um, can be problematic if they're not raised right. 
right? If they're taught poorly. And, and I know, you know, been definitely diving into so many of the different people that talk about dog training and they talk about there are no bad dogs, there are just bad owners, right? <laughs> All of those things. And, and it's funny because uh, most days I'm pretty good, but, but some days where I get a little tired or I get a little stressed or whatever, I can find myself future tripping when it comes to hero. Like if, you know, we have an accident like we just did, right? It's like, it's easy to future trip and go, oh, there we go. That's a problem. And it's just going to get bigger, right? Or uh, an Akita, you know, it's it, any puppy. Um, they bite, they put things in their mouths because that is a part of the, you know, the puppy process. Now, when you talk about a full grown Akita, you have to be really careful with that, right? Like you want to train them well. And we had one day this week as, as an example, where here was just hyped and was just biting and bit hard, right? And we have strategies for being able to help them with that. I know how to do that. But, you know, when you're stressed or when it's you're short on time or it's not perfect or you just got peed on, <laughs> right? It's easy to future trip and go, oh, my gosh, right? If, if I don't fix this today, then, you know, two years from now, he's going to be this ferocious Cujo, terrible dog, right? And it's so funny how, how quickly I can move into future tripping, especially with Hero. And it's like, wait, all right, I, I can do something about tomorrow, right? Um, but it's one of those things that, that where I can do something about it is today. And it doesn't mean that I have to get it perfect today. It just means that I have to make progress today, that we need to make progress today. And it's with a puppy, it's all about celebrating little wins. What's also interesting, and the more I dive into puppy training and Maybe you guys have opinions on this. If you do, you know, put it in the comments. Let me know what you think. But what's interesting about puppy training, it, oftentimes it's very similar to leadership training in that um, when you, when, you know, most of the experts that talk about puppy training, they talk about that, that actually like negative consequences, punishment very rarely works in changing behavior. But what you want to do with a puppy, and oftentimes what you also want to do, as a leader is you want to reward behavior, good behavior that you want to see more of, right? Like, like be able to encourage that behavior that you want to see more of. So instead of spending a lot of time punishing, because with puppies, if you punish bad behavior, oftentimes what that does is the puppies aren't necessarily able to grasp what the punishment is for. And so punishment often makes for a scared, anxious puppy Whereas a reward, oftentimes that will start to connect, especially if you can give that award, reward and that encouragement immediately upon that positive behavior, they'll remember that. They'll be able to connect those dots. And it's so funny because I've, I've realized, you know, as a leader, as a parent, as a friend, it's like, that's just a good policy to live by. That's not just for puppies, right? That's, that's just a good policy for life. Reward behavior that you want to see more of, encourage behavior that that you like encourage the things you want to see more of in your life in your world in your job in your career in your organization and maybe spend a little less time punishing right and i was even thinking about that from a social media standpoint it's like oh gosh it's so easy to complain about all the bad stuff on social but it's like you know what take that puppy policy even to social whereas if you see something good reward it encourage it speak to it if you see something bad walk away right it's, it's me, you know, it's, I've just been thinking about that puppy policy, right? The puppy policy for encouragement, the puppy policy for leadership, <laughs> all of those things, because puppies make messes, people make messes. And um, if, if we engage in the moment, if we don't spend too much time future tripping and, and imagining the terrible things that can happen, imagining being alone and isolated or, um, you know, all of the, the thousands of ways that it could go poorly, but instead focus on the moment, right? Encourage those things you want to see more of, whether it's in a puppy, whether it's in yourself, whether it's in others, right? And spend maybe less time worrying, spend, spend less time punishing, right? Spend more time focusing on those things, the things you want to see more of, right? Um, oftentimes you will see more of those things, right? And so... Yeah, it's just been amazing. And so here's the thing. I it, With this episode, I, I really did do it differently. I hope you're okay with it, that it's, I had some notes down, but I just wanted to talk with you about it. I feel like we've been having coffee here and just talking through some of 
what we're having as the hero's journey. And I want to invite you on that um, because it's, it's, I'm learning a lot. And <laughs> one of the most important things I'm learning is I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect dog owner, but it's one of those things where it's like, hey, if I focus on, again, the things that I can do today, it's a much better chance that Hero's going to be an amazing dog, but also life is going to be more and more amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know if you did. Uh, hit me up. Uh, I, it's one of those that uh, want to be talking with you about these things. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's so great when I get to have interviews with folks. It's so great to dive into some of the specifics that we've been doing lately, uh, those kinds of things. But I do ever, ever so often I want to stop and just have a real world conversation with you just about some of the stuff that's going on in our life. Um, so just wanted to share that. So hit me up. Let me know what you thought. Let me know your thoughts for puppy training or life or whatever. Hit me up at mitchmatthews.com backslash 322. So I want to talk with you. I want to hear from you and uh, let me know your thoughts. And of course, we'll have some pictures of Hero there too. All right. Hey, uh, let me know um, what you think. You can do that in the comments at mitchmatthews.com backslash 322. Um, and if you haven't left a review, let me know what you think there. Uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast, please leave a review because what that does is that often what, you know, no matter what the platform is, uh, you know, Apple or Spotify, the more reviews we have, uh, the more people they help us to reach. And the more that people, you know, that are curious about the podcast can find out more about the podcast because it's, you know, hearing what you guys think that makes a difference. And so, and just know that I read every one of those too. So that makes a difference to me as well. So I am so grateful that we are in this together. I'm so grateful that we can have real talks. Right? I hope you know that, you know, whenever I'm talking, whenever I'm doing a deep dive, whenever I'm doing an interview, my whole goal is to get you guys the real deal stuff, not the Pollyanna stuff, not the rainbows and butterflies stuff, but the real deal stuff. Um, because, hey, we're in this together and I want you dreaming bigger, thinking better and doing more of what you were put on the planet to do. And as you do that, it might be messy. It might be hard. But at the same time, I think it'll be rich, right? That's what that's what it's all about. And that's what I want for you as well. So, hey, no, I love you. No, God loves you. And uh, I am rooting for you. And until we connect again, keep bringing your awesome. Because the world, it does. It needs more of it. All right, talk soon.